Hello my loves and welcome back. I don't know if this will be the first video that you see in the art room, but it's the first one that I'm filming in here. So excuse the mess, excuse the echo. Uh, as you know, I like to kind of close off a big drawing project or challenge with a kind of final piece, a real culmination, a physical representation of the achievement of completing the challenge. So this Inktober is no different. I actually wanted to do something a little different. So in the past I've done zines um, and I've had it in my mind for a little while now that I've wanted to do a large poster um, for something and I thought this would be a great opportunity to get that done. I just think, you know, to bring together all of those 31 pieces of work into one big cohesive piece to represent the finishing of this challenge. Now, obviously, this is going to be quite a large undertaking, not least because I'm starting a 31 day challenge on day 13. So I have a lot of catching up to do, but I thought I would take you along with me from, you know, making the art to scanning it, you know, editing it and optimizing it for, you know, high res, high quality, large scale printing. Um, I'm actually thinking to go around A1 size. So we'll see how that goes. And then obviously the next step of actually getting it printed. So this video is sponsored by Intel, working on this kind of scale with <laughs> so many high res files in Photoshop. It really benefits from Intel's Optane memory and a good processor, uh, but we'll see how my computer ties into everything later on in the video. For now, we have to make some art. Now, you can watch my first half of October video up here, or over here, but as I said, it's a daily drawing challenge for the whole month of October. I'm just starting today because I've been dealing with the stress of moving. So I'm doing my own kind of version of the challenge um, instead of drawing every day, which obviously isn't doable with my life so up in the air right now. My goal is to finish the month with 31 finished drawings, ink drawings. Um, I'm using a limited color palette, which is gonna be quite a challenge for me. But all in all, that's kind of my version of Inktober for this year and you can see in detail how I get on with that in the video that I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm drawing in different sizes but with a general idea of how it will all come together. Um, I'm going to digitally stitch each individual drawing together, um, just rearrange them on Photoshop and I'm aiming to end up with a piece that will fit all of these drawings into about an A2 size. As I said, um, I want to double that for the poster but scaling up shouldn't be an issue if I make the right decisions when it comes to scanning. So that's where we're at now, back in the office, um, which if you're new here is just my old bedroom at my mum's house. Um, all my tech stuff is still here at the moment just because at the new flat we don't have the internet set up yet. So I'm back here to get on with the scanning portion of things. All the art is done, I've got 31 individual pieces here. Some hits, some misses, but overall really happy with what I've ended up with. And I would have a similar process at this stage with scanning even if I had just one large piece because um, my scanner only scans at A4 size, I would still have to do multiple scans and stitch those together. But yeah, with 31 individual pieces I'm going to put as many things in the scanner at one time as I possibly can and then just stitch together as many files as I end up with at the end. It's going to require several scans and lots of stitching so wish me luck. A lot of scanner settings come down to personal preference and also down to the software that comes with your scanner. Um, things like whether you want to apply sharpness, um, whether you want to do some automatic colour correction or if you want to leave that all for yourself to do once you're editing. But one thing that you really don't want to leave to chance is your DPI, which is the like pixel-like dots that uh, make up a whole image. So for a piece that I'm planning on scaling up, obviously the more dots the better. The only issue with that is that you're going to end up with a much larger and much more complicated file in the end, especially as I prefer to scan things in TIFF format which means that I'm ending up with a totally uncompressed file. You're getting all that pure visual information crammed into all those millions and billions of dots that you're then free to do whatever you want with without compromising the quality. So in the end I've got quite a few of these files that I'm going to be working with so the next thing to do will be to load them all up into Photoshop, edit them, edit the colours um, and adjust the sharpness, stuff like that, just get it optimised visually, stitch them all together and then just get the finish looking right for that final print. And that is why I'm really grateful to have a computer like this one. It can do all that without making an issue of it. I know you guys will be able to relate or at least some of you will, um, working with loads of big files on Photoshop and just essentially waiting for it to crash. 
Thankfully, I don't really have to worry about that happening anymore. The combination of working with large raw image files in large applications needs a really hefty processor and some clever memory usage to allow you to work seamlessly and just end up with the best quality that you could ever want. So here I have the Lenovo Idea Center 520 and with it I have a huge amount of control over how I use large files, just not waiting for things to load or struggling to pull files to and from different applications. So I have the freedom to work with scans that are professional quality to my mind much larger than I ever would have thought of working with at home. So for example, I'm opening an A1 size canvas now on Photoshop, just making sure to optimize the settings for print. So I think I went for 300 DPI, uh, just making sure to switch to CMYK for the color profile, just so there are no surprises when it comes to printing. And of course, just making sure I've set it up in the right dimensions, right uh, orientation. And there I've set up what in the past was quite a hefty and complicated workspace, it really hasn't slowed down my workflow now. The thing about Optane memory is that it's kind of tailored to my habits. So it's kind of adapted to my regular practice of launching Photoshop straight after running my scanning software. So it almost seems like Photoshop is ready to load before I've even launched it. Right, so as I said, I'm just trying to get the colors as close to the original as possible, position things in a way that I like them visually. And I have to say, editing artwork is so much easier and possibly actually quite fun when I have a computer that can handle everything that I'm throwing at it, regardless of file size. And I can continue to switch and add scans without the fear of crashing the software or just waiting around while it stutters and lags. One other thing I love about having a proper computer now is the more physical aspect of things, the difference it makes having a large screen and the lack of glare, giving a true and detailed representation of the finished piece. So obviously when I'm happy, I will export the file. Um, different printers ask for different specs, so I just treat each individual print project differently when it comes to which file type I'm exporting to. Then when it comes to finding printers, I always approach it from the point of view of finding someone that does the specific thing that I'm looking for, rather than looking for just any old printer, general printers, um, the nearest to me or the cheapest. I will set out on a search either online or just locally for someone that will do what it is that I want for that particular project, be that, you know, A7 size booklets or in this case, A1 size posters with a matte finish, which is what I was looking for today. Before I take my files to them or send them off with whatever information they're asking for, I will make sure to do a test print myself at home, obviously on a much smaller scale, just to make sure that everything is laid out properly and that the colours are coming through how I want them to, just to avoid any surprises once the final piece is sent to you. And then all I can do is wait. And here we are, a surprisingly pain-free project and what to me is a pretty impressive final product. I know you guys really appreciate these in-depth behind the scenes videos, so I hope this one hasn't disappointed. Let me know if there's anything that I've missed, if you have any questions. As always, don't forget to check out the description for any useful links if you want to find out what Optane Memory can do for you or if you want to learn more about this computer there will be links in the description for you to follow but other than that guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye